Here's the person on earth. Remember that the person on earth is connected to a spirit form, which is your own spirit form. So this is the spirit body. This is the material body of the person on earth. And then the real you, which is the, which is the soul, the half of you, remember? Because the, the soul splits into <coughs> two at incarnation. So this is the half, or the female in this case, half of the soul. So that's you. Remember I said that it's only the soul that can connect with God. Right. It's only this soul. Not the bodies. <coughs> the bodies have nothing to do with this connection with God. The soul is what is the real you. That's the real you. The physical form, just an appendage. The spirit body is just an appendage <coughs> of the real you, the soul. And it's the soul connection with God that we're discussing. Now, there are spirits in the spirit world, so let's just draw a few layers of the spirit world. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a soulmate couple in the spirit world who are the leaders of the divine of the uh, oneness blessing movement. Each uh, one part of one half of them, the male half, is connected to the male avatar on earth. So they have a connection, uh, it's a mediumistic, mediumistic connection between <coughs> that spirit and the person here on earth. Bhagavan. Bhagavan. Yeah. Alright. So just draw him here on earth. And this spirit here is connected with me. Right. And what's her name? Um. And she is connected. And all of their inspiration and direction are being received from these spirits. And all of the help and the law of attraction that these spirit that they are receiving is all based around the spirits in the spirit world heavily influencing everything around them to make everything work properly. These spirits have a, have a desire for God, um, but it's an intellectual. It's intellectual in nature. But they have been perfected in natural love. So they are naturally, they are natural love perfect. In other words, they have perfected the love that they can reflect to any single person in the spirit world or here on earth. This condition, by the way, has, has only ever once been experienced on the earth, a six fear condition. And that was when Ammon and Man, the first human couple, were, were actually uh, created in that condition. So it's a very high spiritual condition in natural love. Now remember in the discussion of the introductions, I talked about the qualities of natural love versus the qualities of divine love. Remember I said the qualities of natural love are very much self-reliant. You talk about yourself becoming God, and or being God. Right? You talk about, um, there's also this heavy con um, focus on um, moral development, you know, doing everything morally correct in terms of what, and it is also holding on to you, your own definition of God. In fact, when you think about it, you actually are saying that you're a God because you're saying you're a part of God. Right? In other words, you're saying that actually you are God expressed in a different form. And many people on the natural love path believe that implicitly. On the divine love path, you will say you're God's child. You will understand the relationship between you and God as God being your parent rather, or your creator rather than you being God yourself. You are an expression of God in that you are an expression of God's desire. But you don't have a divine spark in you until you long for it. You have a natural love spark within you which can be developed to perfection. And that's the highest potential of your soul. That's the highest potential of your soul without God's yes. love entering your soul. Mm. Yep. It was put there by God as a potential. That's right. God, God put this potential and inbuilt this potential into all human souls. That, that the highest possible potential you can grow to without God involved in your life. And when I say without God, I'm not talking about God intellectually involved in your life. I'm talking about God being emotionally involved in your life. Totally different things. Right? 
if you want to progress on the natural on the divine love path, what will happen is that you will have to be you'll get to a point in the seventh sphere where you will lose all intellectual connections, including the intellectual connection you have with God, and you will have a totally emotional connection with God. Right? By the time you make the transition of the new birth. Now what's actually happening is these spirits influencing these people and in fact all of the love that these people have is very much, there's huge there's spirits of a large number of spirits and by the way this is not the, they are not the only human couple on earth that are experiencing this. You've all heard of John of God and yes. different people like that. They are all experiencing the same experience where there are large groups of spirits in the six sphere condition projecting their love through the ectoplasm of the person on earth to other people. You follow me? Mm -hmm. There are whole groups of spirits in the spirit world doing this. You also see it happening in a negative sense. You've all heard of spirit possession of evil spirits. Well, many evil spirits band together in the same way, thousands or even tens of thousands of them, and actually project the same kind of energy to people on earth. They wouldn't come from the sixth. No, they come from the hells of the first sphere or the lower regions of the first sphere. So this happens not only in the sixth sphere but all spheres in between. Right? So it's a natural, it's a thing that all people generally in the spirit world have worked out they can do. Now, the, the intentions of these spirits in doing this are pure in the sense that they are pure as to what they understand God to be. So their intention is pure to help as many people here on the earth as possible to grow spiritually so there's less pain on the earth. That's their intention. Right? So I'm not saying they have a negative intention at all. They have a positive intention for the earth. And in fact, in the six sphere state, that's all you have. You are perfected in natural love, so you have a positive intention with every single person you meet. Right? Including any person on earth. Right. They are, Sorry. Go on. That's why there's been such a positive response from the oneness movement on the planet generally. Yes. Yeah. All that energy coming through. All this energy, there's, there's, there's tens of thousands of six sphere spirits involved in the oneness movement in the spirit world. Right? And there's, there's literally millions of spirits totally in different spheres. So some are in the third sphere, some are in the fourth, some are in the fifth, and many are in the sixth. And there is a, almost a chain of hierarchy, in fact between these spirits. So right? it's an opportunity then to, to bring a lot of love into the planet. Yep. And, and, and many of them have a very, very strong desire to do that. Because many of them, when they were on Earth, experienced some terrible atrocities, which they no longer want to see occurring on Earth. So they have a really, really strong desire for this love to flow onto the Earth. And so they have a very strong desire to project as much pot love as they possibly can through individuals on the Earth to other individuals, if that makes sense. Just like you can have a positive desire to project your love to people in the same manner. They have a, real, a, a, a much more intense desire than you would realise at the moment. Because you can only realise how intense their desire is if you were actually in that state yourself. Does that make sense? So their, their, their desire is intense to give this love that they have as a part of themselves to others. So what they do is they connect specifically with people that they can have a very, very good mediumistic connection with. And then that love gets reflected via that person to the person who's receiving the blessing. Okay, so it does come through Uma and Bhagavan. Um, well, initially it did. Okay. What happened then is as different people went through the same experiences as the two founders, they then have also got into the condition where six spirit, spirit, six fear spirits can connect with them directly. So you, you've heard of all of the, the ones who went to the seven day course, isn't there the, what are they called? Oneness beings. The oneness beings. Mm -hmm. The oneness beings are actually completely enveloped by a six fear spirit. They are a person on the earth who's been completely enveloped in a mediumistic sense, you could say almost possessed, right? Mm -hmm. In a six fear sense of a spirit in the spirit world and that's why they walk around in this permanent state that a six fear spirit would walk around in. Right? And then they reflect all this love to whomever they meet. Right? And that's, that's going to have a very powerful effect emotionally on any person who's receiving that love. 
because you, you're now getting in human form a person who's in the sixth sphere, really, reflecting all of this love to you. Right? And you'll feel it if you're open to it. If you're open to it emotionally, you will feel it. And it will be a lovely, lovely, beautiful sensation that will enter you. Now, the only, there are, there are, from a divine love perspective, a few issues that are involved with it that, that you just need to consider. One is that if this person is enveloped by a spirit, then this person is now not themselves anymore, but a mixture of themselves and the spirit. In other words, their free will is now not being fully respected. And spirits in the sixth sphere do not need to respect your free will. Because it's only spirits that are on the divine life path who are, and celestial spirits who will fully respect your free will. They use their free will way to go into this state. They do. This, per, this person uses their free will. The law of attraction says, this person saying, I want to be this kind of person. And then the spirit connects, bang, you've got that beautiful connection. And then they walk around permanently in that state but it's not a real state for the person. It's actually the real state of the spirit who's connecting to the person. Does that mean it's... Is it inhibiting their soul growth? It's inhibiting their soul growth. Actually, they move in and out of it. They do, because, they, because no single person on earth generally can maintain a permanent connection in that state. Right? So they'll move in and out of it as they go. But... but um, and so, so even like ones like John of God and ones like that who are doing lots of healing through with spirit, lots of spirits helping them, can't permanently stay mm. in that state. And and most of the so-called avatars in India and so forth can't permanently stay in that state either, because there's so much energy passing through them that to stay in that state permanently would actually physically harm them. So they have to actually step out of that state, you know, and then then the spirits themselves actually heal the body of the person. So the, so the body's healed enough for them to step back into that state, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, so that's a permanent thing that goes on constantly. So why don't, why don't the six of the spirits materialise on Earth rather than taking over a body? And because a lot of, for a lot of people on Earth, that would create a lot of fear. But that wouldn't necessarily know, would it? Um, yeah, well, it depends on how many did it at the same time. The other thing is that there are some laws actually of God, divine love laws, that actually prevent spirits from materialising under certain circumstances. And one of the circumstances that prevents a spirit from materialising is the circumstance where the spirit is teaching spiritual truth. So a spirit is allowed to materialise in order to assist you physically, and a spirit is allowed to materialise in order to assist you emotionally. A spirit is allowed to materialise in order to help you uh, work through different issues of your own life um, in terms of you know, saving your life. But a spirit is not allowed to materialise if, if they are teaching spiritual truths. That's currently the case. That's currently the law. It's not going to be the law in the future, but that's God's direction at the moment. That's what God wants at the moment. Is that because God wants each one of us to experience those truths from God? Totally. Totally. God wants the personal relationship with the individual. That's what God wants. God doesn't want anything else. God wants the personal relationship with you.